so this is why you come here, right? This is why you come to AU to hear from Autodesk about what we are going, what, what we're doing, and where is the future taking us, what's coming down the tube. So that's one part of it, which is fantastic. The other reason you come to AU folks, of course, is to hear from your peers, right? Um, hear from people in your industry about what they are doing with all this cool stuff that Autodesk is putting out into the world, right? So, so let's kick that off. Let's start with our first customer. Um, over to you guys. Now, we would like to call on stage Ramyo De, General Manager, Planning and Design, Bangalore International Airport Limited, BIAL. Big round of applause for Ramyo. Thank you, Ramyo. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on, on stage today. So let's get you up here. Yeah. Um, so I just want to, um, you know, people just give us a little sense. So uh, Ramyo works for the Bangalore International Airport. Um, you're probably very familiar with the airport, but uh, just to give us a little introduction to, to the airport and what you do, Ramyo. Hi, uh, I'm Ramyo. I head the design and planning department for Bangalore International Airport. And also we are looking after the BIM department as well. Uh, Bangalore International Airport is in the cusp of a new development in which we are bringing up a new terminal building. And that terminal building will increase our capacity by another 25 million passengers currently. I'll just run you through one of the slides. So in my, uh, some of my previous projects ranged from St. Regis Hotel, Grand Hat, Mumbai, uh, Dallas Airport project in Washington, D.C. And from there, I joined Bangalore Airport in May 2017. Uh, when I joined, we had a, a small team of around five people with us in architecture and design. And this was the existing site condition for showing the T1 building with a uh, single runway and a total area of 1,50,000 square meters. Now, we had planned for a passenger capacity of 20 million per annum in 2014. But what we faced was we have crossed almost 28 million. So this was operating at a max capacity when the decision was getting made to make a new terminal building. Now, as you see, the scale of T1 with its additional infrastructure building, we had a huge job to do. Uh, just to show you the scale, is this is the new scale of the development that is coming up, which is almost three times the size, additional of another runway, additional of another terminal building, 4,55,000 additional space, 25 million passengers per annum, with a strict deadline that we had to be operational by March to 30, one 2021. Now, operational means we have to hand over this to our stakeholders, custom CISA, by December 2020. So it was a very challenging task for us in terms of design, in terms of construction. So we had to hash out a lot of things like how we are going to achieve this, take the design into construction, take it into facilities management, handover, and things like that. You want to tell us about the challenges that you, that you envisage? Yes. Now, before we go to the challenges, uh, this was a central government order that we received some days back in which we, uh, being a multi-billion dollar project, uh, we had a stiff penalty of 1% on the entire project cost that we had to pay back and also reduction in UDF fees if we could not open by March 2021. So the challenges were twofold. One is that how to re make the drawings reach faster on site, how to have accurate drawings, how to have version controls, how to be able to define a proper facilities management module in place. That was our one. And how do you expect to, to deal with these challenges? Okay. What's the answer? So uh, for that, what we honed in was automation, in the sense like we thought about hiring new staff, hiring new people. Uh, but what we faced is that hiring new staff and new people, we had to train them, we had to make them capable enough have to have an airport background, infrastructure background, because this is not just an airport building that we are doing. Metro stations are also going to come in. A lot of flyovers, highways, railway infrastructure has to be added into it. So what we thought was we'll focus ourselves on automation with Autodesk products, as well as train our own internal staff with the Autodesk team so that our internal projects and design team come at par. So some of the slides that we are going to, uh, videos that we are going to show you in the next snapshot yeah, is. Yeah, so let's see a couple of examples, yes. right? Uh, I will just go through it. You can see on the screen what we did was we had close to around nine kilometer of walls in our project in a single building. This is not only for infrastructure, just the T2 building. So what we did was we automated the entire process in which the entire nine kilometer walls are getting constructed in a single day. 
that too with geometric precision, level precision, so that later on when we put our room bounds, when we integrate COBE, facilities management, everything comes. So the work that you see currently on screen was done by our own internal staff and it was done in-house in a single day. So we have implemented this type of technologies with Revit and Dynamo for making our duct system. Currently our duct system for this entire terminal is close to around 12 kilometers. So making a duct system, making it geometric accurate, placing fire dampeners and things like that, we left it to the machines with automation to handle it so that we have more time into design, getting into our stakeholder engagement, getting things on site. So this uh, is one of them. Now the second part is with this, we automated all our finishing schedules. Consider a project of our size in which we have close to around more than 2,000 rooms in which we can place finishes automatically everywhere in the entire project with a single click of a button in which uh, your finishes are customized as per your Excel sheet, as per your architecture plan and your elevations are ready and customized at the end of the day. So this, both these programs that you saw basically saved us a close to around six months of working on site with 10 people like that. So in addition to all the automation that we are doing, uh, this was just two slides that we showed. Uh, we did a manpower analysis of uh, what the kind of resources we have done till our tender stage. Our tender opened yesterday and we are going for ordering to the EPC contractor at the end of this month. Now, if you see a similar project of that scale, that same designers, uh, at 100% DD, we did the project with 18 people. Uh, the similar uh, scale of project needed 68 people just in architecture only. So this so, is, you're talking about the airport in Mumbai, right? Yes. The airport that was built yes. a few years back. Yes. Very similar, very similar characteristics, but you're, you're delivering it, it with what, one-tenth manpower? One-tenth manpower and also uh, time reduction by more than 50%. This is just the shift that we did from using our AutoCAD and Revit. This slide, why I'm uh, stressing this is because during our uh, discussion process with a lot of consultants in India and abroad, what we faced a challenge was that Revit was getting portrayed like it took time, it took additional manpower, it took costs. But as a client, what we felt was it is totally on the opposite spectrum. It makes your process faster, your productivity is higher, as well as your efficiency increases. So it's a great advertisement, folks, for the benefits of building information management, right? Most of us and many of our customers still stuck in the old, old ways of doing things. They're saying, hey, it takes more time to set up, it takes more time to get done, but look at the results. Mumbai and Bangalore, uh, the, the, the results are night and day, right? So yeah. that was how you're doing things today. That's how you, you, you're changing and you know, that's how you're taking advantage of Autodesk technology today. Tell us what the future looks like. Tell us what's excited about, what, what gets you excited about using Autodesk in the year to come. See, now, as I said, that we are using version control with BIM 360 docs, so that at the end of the day, our designs get translated on site with the correct drawing. You don't have multiple drawings of the same element on different versions. So that establishes one of our project controls. Now, taking that project control to a facilities management mode, in, in Bangalore Airport, what we did was, uh, this being a critical infrastructure facility, we do not have to have any downtime or our service has to be at an instant. So what we did was we took COBE, that is Construction Operation Building Information Exchange, which is an open source inside Revit, and took it further to a facilities management module. Now, facilities management module means that Bang Bangalore Airport COBE is an open source COBE. That means today, tomorrow, if XYZ, any asset man vendor comes in, he just plugs onto our system and he gets everything live. I do not have any downtime if that vendor shifts away to a different project. Because the 3D model is ours, the base model is ours, the parameters are ours, and it is just a plug and play mechanism. So you want to show us an example of, um, yes. of how you do this? So what we did was in the last couple of months... Because I've never heard this thing, using Revit for facilities management. That's a, yes. Yeah. So what we did was we accessed the Revit API in the last couple of months and sat with our engineering and maintenance team of finding what assets they want to maintain in the airport and to build an open core on it. So I'll show you an example in which uh, you will see a signage display. We are generating a QR tag based on all the Kobe data and all the parameters inside with programming the QR code to have a 25% uh, damage proof and then getting that QR code inserted like a metal tag or a metal plate inside our fixed asset.
So you're getting all the characteristics of that display station, yes. it, which is in Revit, and you, you're condensing that into the QR code. Yes. Okay. So what happens is, once the QR code uh, for our asset, this is just a signage example, it is happening right now for all our managed assets. When the asset comes in play, if the asset is malfunctioning or there is a request to be done, because all our documents right now are migrating to BIM 360, uh, a person raises a service request just by scanning the QR code over there and he gets a typical information with a geographical tag. Consider an airport project or an infra project in which you have 5,000 acres, 10,000 acres. You have to locate an asset. How do you locate that? Someone has raised a request. So what you do is you have those point X, Y, Z which has been taken from Revit itself as geo coordinates and you can just type in your Google map. We are making this as an open source. You type in your Google map, your asset management guy can easily locate within thousands of assets where it is located without any downtime. So when he raises a service request, the engineering and maintenance team, when he scans the code, his, computer, his Android phone gives a different thing. Now, it is basically divided into drawings, user manuals, service manuals, and things like that. It is basically what we have given a freedom to the engineering and maintenance guy down the line who's going to service an asset uh, exact freedom that when you are going to service an asset, what type of wiring diagrams you need, what type of uh, service diagrams, who serviced it last. Currently, if you see, even if I have to change a light bulb, that person has to run back and forth to just see what communication has happened. He does not have the correct drawings in it because it is not linked to BIM 360 right now. So we are linking the entire thing and then he closes the request at that instant. And who closes the request is also tagged inside. So we can show a small video okay, of let's run the, video. the process yes. that is currently in place in Bangalore airport. So you will see the person. This is something that we shot just a couple of days back, so see, live um, in it, action. Yes, it's super fast. You scan it. It gives you all the information there. And it is platform free. That means Revit is now accessed by any Android devices, Apple devices. So in the ENM information, you go to drawings. It goes to the current drawing. You access the signage part you see all the properties that are there currently. So being a technician, whether it is a signage, whether it is a chiller plant, whether it's a malfunctioning valve, every information is there with that guy who is working on site. He does not have to run like a typical asset management to a central station, work back, come forth. So once he is done, he, uh, he closes the request, he leaves a comment, and then it becomes a back channel database saying that who closed it, and it's automatically updated into the system. Excellent. So did you see that, guys? M many times you have to invest in a, in a facilities management solution independently. Ramyo says, hey, I don't need this. I can do all of this, taking the power of what's in, in Revit, extending it to, to a platform like BIM 360, and rolling it out the same, you know, taking that design data and, and, and taking that forward through construction also into operations and maintenance. So that's fantastic. I've, I've never seen a use case like this, so this is fantastic work that you're doing. Uh, tell us a little bit more final thing that I wanted to ask you. What you do as the airport, as uh, Bangalore International Airport is one thing, but to build a massive project like this, you have an ecosystem to deal with, right? So how do you translate your vision to the, to the ecosystem? See, over the last couple of months when we went for tender, we had an active participation with Autodesk also, and we came up with a very simple structure in which you have a schedule or you have a flowchart defining what the EPC contractor is going to do, what their subcontracts are going to do, because this was an exercise in which Autodesk helped us to educate more our EPC contractors to, to show how the chain exactly works in BIM 360, Revit, and the entire Autodesk platforms. So at the end of the day, Bial still has the entire control but the control is also segregated into various persons down the line to have a proper system in place. So this Fantastic. was Fantastic. So here's, here's folks, I mean, you talk about the power of uh, industry collections, a great example of a customer using, starting with something like Revit, but extending it out to the entire industry collection and using that to drive their vision across the entire ecosystem that they manage. Thank you. Thank you, Ramyo. Thank you for Thanks. sharing this with us. Uh, pleasure to have you join us. And I'm sure you will, you will not have any of those penalties that you talked about. So thank, thank you once again. Thank you.